good uh, morning everybody uh, my name is uh, navid mohammed i am uh, a lecturer of autonomous driving at uh, university of tartu and um, today i'll be talking about uh, behavior modeling and prediction motion prediction uh, especially in the context of uh, autonomous uh, driving uh, a little bit about uh, myself um i uh, basically am uh, a mechatronics engineer um i have uh, uh, had a couple of uh, postdocs uh, uh, before joining university of tartu one uh, in uh, uh, taltech center for biorobotics and one in sweden and then in 2019 i joined university of tartu as a lecturer of autonomous driving um so um uh, let's begin with the autonomous driving itself what is autonomous driving um it's basically the ability of a vehicle to operate from one point to another uh, without the intervention of a human operator and um, why uh, do we even want to um, do autonomous driving uh, so why bother you know like uh, humans drive well right uh, so the biggest uh, i think motivation or the biggest uh, uh, benefit that autonomous driving promises is um, uh safer roads so most of the uh, accidents road accidents they are caused by human error so these uh, autonomous vehicles when they mature they uh, have the promise of being very very safe uh, all the vehicles will know where they are they are connected to each other etc uh, then there are other, many other benefits for example mobility for all you don't need to have a driver's license you don't need to be of a certain age to be able to drive etc then uh, you don't need to focus on driving you can do whatever you want while you're going from one point to another and the whole transportation system will also become more efficient because the cars they can move in sync they know where they are as i said they are connected um talking a bit more about autonomous driving uh, what do we do when we as humans are driving a vehicle uh, basically we uh need to know uh, what the environment around us uh, need to see the environment uh, know where we are on the road inside a city where we are inside a country where we are how to accelerate decelerate um know where you want to go right and have a plan to go there um and uh, have an idea about the area in which you are in not just know where you are inside a city but also know how the streets in the city are right have a map of the environment and then uh know how others uh, behave in the environment and uh, what to predict uh, what to get, uh, expect from their motions and be able to interact uh, with others uh, also uh in autonomous uh, vehicles um, they have uh, all these sub problems uh, as part of uh, you know giving uh, and owning a vehicle with the uh, autonomy uh and um, they have a very nice one to one mapping uh between you know these areas uh, that a human has to uh, be capable of and uh, autonomous driving vehicle has to be uh, capable of and today i'm going to talk about just one of them uh, which is uh, the behavior prediction uh, or to be more complete behavior modeling motion prediction everything is included in this umbrella uh, so what is it when you are on the road uh as a driver or if you are on the road as a, a rider riding in a vehicle you all uh, instinctively know what other agents are there on the roads other agents means other vehicles other pedestrians bicyclists etc you already have a model of their behavior in your mind how to uh, what to expect from them what, what where will they be in 5 seconds from now where will they be in 10 seconds from now Uh, and so on and why do we do it we do it for the purpose of safety ensuring the safety and also uh, enhanced efficiency i mean you could move at 5 km per hour uh, and not hit anyone but that would be pointless an autonomous driving car again uh, the same way could move at very slow speed not hit anyone but it would be a very very uh, inefficient and uh, you know useless uh, vehicle uh, so we want to have efficiency also and uh, uh, this kind of things that we as human drivers can take for granted are not trivial at all for autonomous vehicles uh, some examples here on the left figure you see two people chatting uh, at a crosswalk as a human we would very instinctively know that they are not they are talking to each other they are not going to all of a sudden jump on the crosswalk but if they we see that they finish the chat 
then we will expect one of them, you know, if they, they turn towards the crosswalk to uh, jump on the crosswalk. So we as a human driver would know. But for autonomous vehicles, this is not trivial. Same way, a very narrow street, a uh, human driver would uh, take over a pedestrian safely, even if the margins are really, really tight for an autonomous vehicle, it might not be allowed, you know, because the safety margins are very tight. Same way, the example of a roundabout, we as human drivers can enter and uh, uh, roundabouts with very, very smooth uh, maneuvers, uh, but how to do that for an autonomous vehicle. So I'm going to talk about uh, some works that we have done um, in this uh, context, and then I'm going to talk about where we are heading. Um, so the first thing, uh, example uh, that I would like to present is the case of a roundabout. So here is a roundabout. How do we uh, create methods that we can endow uh, autonomous vehicles with to be able to um, uh, predict the motion of other uh, vehicles inside the roundabout and thus uh, efficiently uh, enter the uh, roundabout. Uh, so um, uh, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, there is uh, 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 one way, the one simplest way is to see the round uh, roundabout geometry, use it, uh, another way is to uh, take the uh, motions of uh, so, so the, a data-driven approach where you see the patterns inside the roundabout and use that to predict um, the uh, motion of vehicles that are in the roundabout when your autonomous driving vehicle actually wants to enter the roundabout. Uh, we uh, have used different techniques, for example, filtering techniques, machine learning techniques to uh, uh, build this kind of uh, prediction algorithms here on the left bottom, you see the traffic in the roundabout. And on the lower bottom, you see our algorithm, you know, a vehicle has entered the roundabout and it's predicting where it's going to end up uh, from the uh, possible exit directions. And uh, we see that our method, you know, in the beginning, it, it's not very sure, but then it converges to one exit and then the vehicle actually we see also exiting at the same uh, exit. Uh, so just some examples. Another work that we, I would like to present is a work on uh, uh, the interaction of uh, vehicles and uh, bicycles. Uh, so here, what? So basically, a vehicle uh, at a crosswalk for uh, bicycles has to give way or yield. So we, we are trying to uh, understand what are the factors that contribute to this yielding decision by the drivers or not yielding, right? So do they yield or not yield? So we uh, define some interaction zone where the uh, basically vehicles and bicycles, they start interacting with each other, uh, you know, by, for example, eye contact, or th they start to basically influence each other's uh, um, motion. And then the, the crosswalk itself is the uh, conflict zone. Uh, here, the, there's the, uh, the data, the trajectories that we uh, have gathered, uh, basically that, that have been gathered using a overhead camera. Um, so uh, the, uh, the findings of the study were that we collected tens of, uh, we tested tens of uh, different characteristics that uh, basically um, could uh, be, uh, that were candidates for, you know, uh, influencing this kind of interaction. And we found out that uh, these four were the most important, like the distance of the bicycle uh, from the crosswalk when the uh, vehicle enters the interaction zone. Uh, similarly, the vehicle speed, the uh, minimum speed inside the uh, uh, zone that the vehicle uh, had, and the uh, distance uh, at which uh, the vehicle the vehicle was when it was at the minimum speed from the bicycle, etc. Um, uh, so these were just two examples of what we have done. And now uh, where we are going, what we are currently doing, um, these example works what, uh, that I presented, they uh, use perception from uh, infrastructural sensors. So uh, when you go uh, to using the vehicles uh, sensors themselves, uh, the problem becomes a little bit more challenging because the, uh, there's occlusions, uh, the, the field of view changes, et cetera. So what we're trying to do right now is uh, do uh, this kind of vehicle uh, motion prediction at roundabouts and uh, unsignalized intersections using vehicles own sensors, lidars, cameras. Uh, then uh, uh, pedestrian motion prediction at uh, crosswalks using again the vehicles own uh, sensors. Um, then uh, anomaly detection, you know, like people walking along the streets, people just uh, standing, chatting, or doing something, just working at, uh, uh, at next to a crosswalk. And so the ve vehicle is not confused that, okay, this person is about to jump on the crosswalk, right? And people just crossing um, 
streets at random areas, not really des designated for crossing. Uh, then um, basically uh, in incorporating all this to the software stacks, you know, and, uh, validating one method independently is one thing, but in implementing it on, in a whole ecosystem that vehicle runs on uh, is also an aspect uh, of the, the work. And this is not all. There is many different things uh, to still um, think about, for example, priority rules in traffic. For example, giving way to bus buses in public transportation lanes, etc. Uh, so uh, I'll conclude my talk by uh, uh, the, uh, the the summary of uh, what I presented. So the take home message here is that uh, agent behavior modeling, motion prediction, it has been a very uh, long investigated area in the bigger field of uh, robotics, uh, even before the research in autonomous driving really picked up. Um, uh, um, basically uh, a decade or a decade and a half ago. Um, and uh, um, the thing that makes it much, much more challenging in the case of autonomous driving is the level of complexity in the environment. You know, when you're uh, talking about a smaller robot, a safer environment, um, where the robot can't do much damage, the uh, problem is uh, more, uh, uh, let's say, manageable yeah, easily. But uh, you're on the road with a huge vehicle, uh, lots of other vehicles, pedestrians, bicyclists, etc. The complexity is level is way uh, higher, so that makes this uh, problem very challenging in the context of autonomous driving. And another thing that I would like to add as a take home message is that this uh, uh, research uh, that we are doing in autonomous driving it's not really limited to autonomous driving. These methods they are uh, applicable to delivery robots to automated uh, vehicles in warehouses, factory floors, mines, ports, et cetera. And also urban planning in the sense that, you know, you have an, uh, you're designing a crosswalk, for example, you're designing an intersection. These kind of methods can assist you there also. So um, that's uh, my uh, 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 presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm very, very happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you, Navid. Um, do you have any questions from the crowd? If not, then we have a question in workshop. In your opinion, what company currently leads the autonomous revolution and when could we use it as an everyday consumer? Okay, this is a, a very interesting question. There is actually many companies that are working hard and that have been working long on autonomous driving. Uh, the first, uh, talking about big uh, companies, the first one that uh, started working in autonomous driving is Google. So uh, they started the Google self-driving project more than a decade ago. Then uh, now it has become Waymo. So basically they are operating uh, uh, self-driving uh, taxi services in very limited you know, cities uh, in US without a safety driver, which is, a, I think, uh, uh, a big step to have, you know, not to have a safety driver inside all the time. Um, so uh, then, of course, uh, if we talk about uh, the... the um, Vehicle industry, you know, the vehicle manufacturers themselves, not tech companies, but vehicle manufacturers, uh, you have almost all the vehicle manufacturers, big ones working in uh, autonomous driving. You have uh, uh, Tesla, which uh, as uh, you, many of you must have heard, they have this autopilot system, you know, uh, it's still, there's many levels of autonomy, you know, from zero to five, and they're still on level two. Uh, the, um, I didn't talk about the levels of autonomy because uh, the uh, time was limited. Anyways, they were still on level two, which is, you know, on the range of zero to five, not very high, but still they are uh, quite uh, ahead um, in uh, at, at least trying to validate the AI-based uh, autonomous driving systems. Then uh, we have all of the manufacturers, basically Volvo working on it. And then um, uh, there is uh, um, uh, companies like... Uh, 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 there was, uh, you know, the Uber uh, self-driving setup, there's Bolt working on it here in Estonia. We are collaborating a lot with Bolt. So the thing is, um, there's many, many companies. It's very hard to say who is the, you know, uh, who has gone the farthest. I think in terms of uh, manufacturers, uh, in a study in the States, the number one was actually Fiat and Chrysler Group, and Tesla was like third or fourth, actually, in terms of all of the compatibilities and, and, uh, and the way it drives. 
But uh, yeah. I have a question. Is the research that you're doing uh, local in terms of, let's say, demographics, uh, if we study someone in Tartu and if we take the same uh, simulation or the same algorithm to, let's say, Italy, where there's like uh, the traffic itself is completely different and uh, pedestrians as well, would you say that the same thing works there or not? It, it does not. Uh, yeah. The thing is, uh, as I um, mentioned, you know, especially let's talk about uh, the only one aspect, which is the motion uh, prediction uh, aspect uh, that I presented today. Uh, the, uh, the culture, uh, the cultural aspects also are a part of that behavior model. So it's also a research question how to incorporate the context of where you are inside your uh, models so that the vehicle, if it's in one city, it would know here, this is how people uh, move. In another city, this is what we expect from the uh, pedestrians on the road. So this is still an open research question. Right now, it's not solved. It, if you uh, have tuned an algorithm for one place, it won't necessarily work in another place. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Navid.